paper there on the very front page. Hidden crime, another big scandal. Who will it be today? As the price of the rise, morals decline, hope falls to an all time low. Everything looks bad, it can make me real sad if it wasn't for the things I know. I know. I know my sins are covered by the blood of the righteous lamb. Good evening on this Wednesday afternoon. It's, I'm so glad that you're choosing uh, to tune in with us here at New Hope Baptist Church. And we have a lot going on on this Wednesday night. I've got some things to mention. Remember uh, that this Wednesday night here at the church, uh, we have our um, uh, youth youth meeting. We have, And we're going to have a great time. It's from ages 5 to 12 years of age. We have fun games. We have all sorts of things going on here. It's our Youth Alive Ministry. And I want you to come be a part of that. Uh, bring, bring, your, bring your your children by, drop them off with us, or you come and stay with us and have a great time. I want to mention this coming Saturday, October the 31st, here at New Hope Baptist Church. Uh, this is for parents and their children from ages uh, 5 to 12. We are going to have a Harvest Fun Day here at the church. We're going to have fun games. We're going to have pumpkin painting. Uh, we're going to have hot dogs. We're going to have a bonfire. We're going to have some uh, so s'mores going to have a hayride. Uh, it's going to be a great afternoon. Uh, bring your lounge chair and get ready to uh, uh, have some great fellowship here at New Hope Baptist Church. And I want you to come. Pray for good weather on this, on this coming Saturday. And it's exciting what the Lord's doing. I uh, also want to mention on this Wednesday night about the greatest story ever told. And we're going to be launching, uh, we launched Sunday night, our Christmas program and people started signing up. I want you to be a part of that. Uh, maybe you cannot come and be a part of the cast this year, but you can start praying. You can start praying that a holy God will touch it and be a part of it because it's exciting what we're going to be doing. It's going to take some, some elbow grease and, and everybody working together, but, but we'll come together and God will be with us and we'll build something great for him. Uh, let me mention some prayer requests. Remember Miss Bonnie Beaver uh, who had the surgery Monday on her knee. So you pray for her recovery. Also, we have several folks sick, families. Please remember them. Uh, remember the upcoming election that's coming. I pray that you'll be a part of that election and that you'll get out and vote. And, and vote the Bible way. Vote the Bible way. See what the Bible says that, that life should be like, the morals of our town, our nation. And vote, and, and vote according to the Word of God. And you cannot go wrong there. And so, so what I want to do is I want to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. 
And, and, and when we get done praying, I want you to get your Bible, if you would please, uh, this afternoon. And uh, I want you to turn, if you would please, to the book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41. The book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41, that's going to be our text verse for this Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible study. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear Jesus, for this wonderful day. This afternoon, Father, to come to the house of God. And, Lord, to put online our Wednesday night services. And, Lord, there's another service that's going to be going on on Wednesday night here with our Youth Alive ministry. And, Heavenly Father, I pray, Holy God, that, God, you'd put your hand upon it and, God, we'd see you moving in a great, mighty way upon people's lives. Heavenly Father, I, I ask you, Father, would you please, Lord, help our nation. Lord, help people to get out, God's people to get out and vote. Just don't sit at home, but get out and vote. And, and let's keep America, let's keep America uh, in the hand of Almighty God. Heavenly Father, I pray, God, for churches this afternoon. I pray for an encouragement to pastors. And, Lord, I know, God, they're battling discouragement and weariness. And I pray, Holy God, that you would encourage them and their congregations. Lord, I ask you, would you please, Father, help our Christmas program. Lord, as we begin to pray and begin to labor in prayer for that to be successful and we might have the power of the living God upon it. And I pray for our Father, for our folks who are sick. I pray, Lord, you touch their bodies and raise them up. And Father, Miss Scarlett, who's home, Father, a rehab, and I pray, God, you touch her and that family. And, Lord, I thank you for the privilege you've given us here at New Hope Baptist Church to minister, to work together, and see some great things happen for you. And, Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. At this time, the age of Baptist.
Okay, you have your Bibles now, if you would please. I know you're in Matthew chapter 25, and we're going to look at verse 41. And the Word of God says, Then, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I want us to read that again. I want you to look at that very carefully. It says, Then, then shall he say also unto them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Let's pray this afternoon. Heavenly Father, I pray now, Lord Jesus, that God, you'd help me. God, I will be used by you on this Wednesday night, Father, as you have burdened my heart and burned upon my heart, God, this timely, this timely truth from the Word of God. Oh, dear God, may we awaken as Christians and realize that we have loved ones, dear God, and friends and acquaintances, Father, that need you. Lord, may our churches, our preachers, Lord, may our evangelists, Father, may we awaken from our slumber in this short time that you've given to us because, Lord, I believe your, your coming is nigh. I'll be the return of Jesus Christ at hand. Oh, Father, help us. Help me tonight to be to God with this great truth from the Word of God. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible teaches that people go to hell and back. We are going to examine this great truth in the Word of God this afternoon. I want you to play, pay as close attention as you can possibly. The Bible has a great deal to say about hell. In fact, the Bible says more about hell than it does heaven. Did you hear what I said? The Bible says more about hell than it does heaven. There are more verses that tell about the conditions in hell and, that the, and then the conditions in heaven. Let me say that again also, that the Word of God gives us more verses that, that tells us about the condition of hell than it does the conditions of heaven. Modern theologians in our day and age, and God helped this group of people as they tried to dismiss the fact that there's a hell. Our seminaries for young men, are going and surrendered call to preach, have versions of the Bible that dismiss hell. They dismiss this place that God said is real. And we're going to look more and more into that tonight as we go through the scriptures. My friend, we, we are liars when we tell people that there's no hell. Modern religion dismisses that there's a hell at all. Our churches no longer are we preaching about hell. There was, I read this story, and I pinned this story down for tonight about this about this evangelist and I'll tell you who he was. His name was Oliver B. Green. And Oliver B. Green was had his tent set up and he was preaching. And there was there were some local people from a from a college came over and it was a science college. And they came over and they sat and, and they sat about middle ways of the meeting and they took notes. And then and and, and then they would go away to, to their classes and they would they would downplay the meeting. And so what they thought they'd do was they, they'd really show themselves, so they, they brought some of their students over to Brother Green's tent meeting. And on that night, Brother Green, God impressed upon his heart to preach on hell, and he preached on hell. And, and, and these, these scholars and, and these students came up to him after the service, and, and they laughed at him, and they mocked him and said there's no such place as hell. And scientifically, you cannot prove that there's a hell. Oliver B. Green looked at them and and he kind of smiled, and he said, there's a whole lot about God that no man knows, and that's why he's God. And they did not like his answer. So they, they came every night to the meeting, and they were doing everything they could to discourage the meeting by any influence that they had. So one of those men, after a few weeks, he took sick, and, and, and he was really, really bad sick. And he wound up in the local hospital. And his friends came up to see him, and he said, I, I, I just don't know what's wrong. He, he said, I'm so cold, and, and I'm so dark. And, 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 and he, said, uh, he, he, he said, there's somebody that's been coming in the room of a nighttime while I've been here in, in the hospital. And the, the friends were there, and during the night, the demon of hell come and got this scholar, come and got this professor. And he was screaming, you lied, you lied, devil, you lied, you lied. And, and he said, they're pulling me, they're pulling me into hell. The rest of these scholars went back to the tent meeting that was still going on. And all that night, they walked the aisle 
and they trusted Christ as their Savior, they found that hell was real. Can I say tonight, can I say this afternoon that, that, that you are playing a very dangerous game if you're not saved? The other thing you're doing is when you say that there's no hell and you deny God and the people that we are around deny God and we don't warn them about hell, they're, they're, they're going to have a day coming that they're going, to, they're going to be awakened from their sleep. Also understand that Noah's day, they did not believe a flood was coming. They thought Noah was foolish in building the ark. They thought he was, he'd maybe lost his marbles. But my friend, it made no difference what they said about Noah and what they said about that ark and what they, what they disclaimed and anything they wanted to do to ridicule that work whenever that ark was finished and God put the animals on that ark and God put Noah and his family on that ark and the word of God says, and God shut the door. And then they sat there and on the eighth day, they sat there seven days and on the eighth day it began to rain and the earth was consumed. The earth was, was flooded 40 days and 40 nights. My friend, let me say this, that whenever you go to hell, whenever your loved one goes to hell, God shuts the door. God shuts the door on them being able to repent and cry out to God and say, oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We need to wake up as Christians and understand that our lost loved ones need Jesus Christ. We need to get back to praying for our town, our communities, our nation. There's millions of people in America that's going to perish and they're going to go to hell if you and I don't do something about it. Don't misunderstand me. I believe in education. I believe that everybody should have an ed education the best of their abilities. But my friend, when you and I dismiss the fact that we have a holy God, whenever the morals of our society dismiss that God has an order to which marriage should be in, and God has an order of how we are to live morally in his eyes. My friend, remember this. Lot's day didn't believe it whenever the angels came to visit Lot and said, Lot, we're going to destroy this Sodom and Gomorrah, these cities of people are going to be destroyed. If they would have been 10 righteous people, they would have been spared. Just 10 righteous people and all those millions of people, there could not be found 10 righteous people. And God rained fire and brimstone on it. And only Lot and his two daughters made it out safely. His wife came and looked back and she turned us off. My friend, understand this, that we may think that we are the Lord over God. My friend, we were never Lord over God. There will not be a society. They will not be a government. They will not be a nation that will ever dictate to God who God is and what God's going to do and not going to do. My friend, God, a heavenly God, a holy God, will have his judgment upon the face of this earth. I, I, listen, I'd rather be ignorant with the knowledge of this world and know in my heart that I've been saved than to die the smartest person in all the world and go to hell. All oh, you listen to me. There's a lot of people think that their moms and dads were ignorant because they believed in God and they believed the word of God and they thought they were foolish in their, in their teachings to them and saying, son, live clean, daughter, live clean. Oh, but can I say this? They were not ignorant at all. They were, they, they were very smart and very wisdom people about the word of God. My friend, the Bible's never been wrong. It never will be wrong, but men will be wrong. And I say this, whenever you get to the place in your life you think you're so modern, whenever you get to the place in your life you think the Bible's full of fairy tales, whenever you get to your place, your, your point in life that you think going to church is nothing to it, whenever you think that the word of God is nothing but filled with jokes and lies, whenever you get to that point in your life, you're gonna wind up in hell when you die. You understand me? You're gonna wind up in hell when you die. You say, preacher, I don't like what you're telling me. It makes no difference. The word of God's still true. It says you must be born again. Something else, you may not believe the Bible, you say, yes, I do, but I don't believe there's a hell. I've had people, I, I, I don't understand this, how a Christian can read the word of God and dismiss the place called 
hell. I don't understand how you can do it. I don't understand how you can accept heaven and dismiss hell. And, and that's exactly what Satan wants us to do in our churches. He wants us to just have them together and, and just have a, like, like a little sermonette and have a little bit of fellowship and everybody leave and go their own way. And boy, we're happy. We belong to such and such church down there. My friend, our churches have turned into clubs. Our churches have turned in to to places of gathering, and, and, and listen, the fire departments have more God in them than our churches do. Hey, I'm saying that, that the Moose Club has more God in it than, than our churches do. We have a form of God in this divine thy power of, and people flock to it. And my friend, let me say this. Unless you're saved, it don't matter where you go to church, it don't matter what you call yourself, unless you've been born again, you are going to go to hell. That's just exactly the way the Bible is. You say, but preacher, listen, I want to warn you. You don't want to go to hell. You, and I say all you preachers that stand and tell your people there's no hell, all you preachers that stand and say, oh, don't worry about it, there's nothing to hell, you are a liar. In fact, you are a hireling. You are not a shepherd. You are a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's what you are. You are there to scatter the flock. You are there to scatter people. And my friend, because you preached such and because you stood on such, you are going to have people die and go to hell. And the blood and the blood of that congregation is going to be on your hands. I don't understand it. How that men started out preaching the word of God, started out warning people about hell, and all of a sudden as you get older in the ministry, all of a sudden you just take a turn and you forget your foundation. You And you want to be a, a people pleaser rather than a God pleaser. Oh, how dangerous that is. Sir, God help you. You need help. You turn your back on God. You turn your back on the scriptures. You turn your back on the doctrine of hell. You turn, the back, you turn your back on salvation by grace through faith. And now you've turned to works. And now you've turned to, to feel good and, and, and tickle my ear and scratch my back. Hey, hey, that right there is what's going to send people to hell because you are teaching and you are preaching to believe in something other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me go on. The reason for hell is in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41, the verses of, of Scripture that we read. It says, then he said, then shall he say also unto them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Notice what he says, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was not prepared for humanity. Hell was prepared for Satan and his angels. What is the purpose of hell? Why was hell made? Hell was made for Lucifer. Hell was made for the, for the fallen angels. And they, Lucifer decided one day in, in heaven that, that he would rebel against the holy God and that he would put his throne above God's throne. And immediately in that rebellion, God put him down and God cast him down to the earth. And what that word cast means there, it means that Satan was literally hurtled. Satan was literally hurtled to the earth. And, and, the, and the angels that decided they'd follow him, they was hurtled to the earth with him. Over and over and over they'd hurtle and that they were sent down to the earth. And Isaiah says this in chapter 14, verse 2. Let me read this. How art thou fallen from heaven? Lucifer, O oh Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? And immediately God prepared for the, for the devil and his angels a place called hell. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41, let me read the last part of that. You look with me. It says prepared for the devil and his angels. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm saying that you're choosing. When you do not believe in Jesus Christ as God's only begotten Son, will you not confess your sins and ask God to forgive you of your sins? Whenever you dismiss God and you dismiss uh, the Bible and you dismiss heaven and you dismiss hell and you say, I'm going to be, I'm going to be an atheist. My friend, you're making a choice that day. Your loved one's making a choice that day. Your neighbor's making a choice that day. And they are saying, I want to go to hell and I want to live, I want to be there with the devil and the, and the angels, the fallen angels that God cast down to the earth. Oh, why would we choose such a thing when we know that hell is not made for us? 
But if you refuse Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I don't care who you are. I don't care what church you belong to. You're going to die and you're going to go to hell. Oh, listen, I get sick to my stomach, and let me emphasize again, I get sick to my stomach at the preachers of our day. I get sick to my stomach at the churches of our day. How that, how that we just come together in a social club. Let me, Holy Spirit said, emphasize that again. If you're in a social club, if you've got someone in your home that's in a social club, and they say, oh, I like that over there. I mean, the preacher don't yell, he don't scream. Oh, it's just so wonderful. Everybody's just so lovely. My friend, let me say this. You can be as lovely as you want to be, but if you're not ready to meet Jesus Christ, if you've not been saved, born again, then all that loveliness is going to turn to horror one day in hell. Something else, the location of hell. The Bible gives us a clear, a clear indication of where hell is. The Bible seems to imply that hell is downward. Heaven is mentioned as going up, and hell referred to as going down. Hell is said to be the bottomless pit in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. And he opened the bottomless pit. Now, I want you to listen to me on this point here that it's a bottomless pit. You can never reach the bottom of hell. You'll, you'll, you'll go over and over and hurdle over and over and over for all eternity. Listen, you can be a Lutheran, a Baptist, a Methodist, whatever, but if you die without Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to be cast into the, in what God says in Revelation, the bottomless pit, the bottomless pit. While people are, are burning, they are also falling. While, while people are screaming, they're also falling. While people are gnashing of teeth, they're also falling. Hey, while they are begging for one drop of water, they're also falling. Are you listening? Are you listening to me? It's not God's will that any man should perish. It should never be the will of the church that a town should perish. It should never be the will of the church that a nation should perish. We have lost the will of God. We have, lost, we have lost our will. When our will don't match up with God's will, we've lost our will. Whenever our thoughts don't match up to God's thought, then we've lost our thoughts. Whenever our ways don't match up to God's ways, we've lost our way. And my friend, let me say this, that we as churches and we as preachers and we as Christian people, we have lost all three of those things. We don't want to sow in no more. We don't want to warn people about hell. We don't want to be laughed at and scoffed at. My friend, let me say this, that if the people around us die and go to hell, there will never, there's never hope for them again. And the laughter stops. The laughter stops whenever the demons come out of hell to get you and they, they bind you hand and foot and they drag you down to that darkness, that darkness beyond any darkness you've ever dreamed of. Oh, we need to listen. There's nothing to stand on in hell. There's nothing to rest on. There's no ledges. There's no park to go by. There's, there's no river to go visit. There's no beach to drive to and spend a week. Hey, there's no vacation in the mountains. My friend, let me say this, that teenagers, boys and girls and families are in hell this very moment on this Wednesday night that are screaming over and over and over and they're turning again and again and again. And in hell, there's gnashing of teeth. That means that people, as you go by, is grabbing somebody and biting on them. My friend, your body dies, but it never dies. You feel death over and over again. The Word of God says that in hell that there's worms working in and out your body constantly. My friend, you talk about a miserable state. You talking about all eternity. And my friend, you made a choice. You thought God was a fool. You thought the preaching was a fool. You thought everything about church was foolish. And I'm here to say it's it's time that God's people, it's time that the church of the living God, we begin to wake up and warn people there's a hell. Something else. A person can get out of hell. Now you listen. Turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 20. Look at verses 13 through 15. The word of God says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And the dead 
and, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Oh, listen, just for a brief time, one day at the judgment of God, those that are in hell, the rejectors, the scoffers, the mockers, all those people that blaspheme and, and they, they made sport of God, all the atheist people, all these rejectors of God, all these religious but lost people, they're going to be called up out of the bottomless pit for a little while and God is going to read to them their life. It's going to be, it's going to be in heaven. I'm not sure how it's going to be, but I do know that God is going to go through each man, each woman, each child, each person's life, and God's going to go through it. He's going to, he's going to read back their life. He's going to say the time this starts you denying God, this, he's going to read back that life. And on that, on that list, it is going to be every time you've heard the gospel, every time that someone give you a gospel tract, every time you went by a church and the Holy Spirit moved on your life and said, listen, you need to be born again, and you hardened your heart, and you said no to God, and it's gone that day they're going to bind you hand and foot, and the Word of God says they're going to cast you back into outer darkness. You've got just a relief. My friend, let me say, there are going to be people in heaven, I believe, they are going to be screaming, have mercy. There are going to be people screaming, I want to be saved. There's going to be people pleading all sorts of things because they don't want to go back there. They listen, but you'll never escape it. Once you're there, you'll never escape it. You've got to go back. So people are going to come from hell. They're going to come and stand in judgment, and then God is going to cast them back into hell. God is going to give you a fair, a fair judgment, and your life is what's going to judge you. Your rejection is what's going to judge you. Understand that God is not placing you in hell. You place God to where he has to place you back where you rejected God. So you might think you're pretty smart right now. You might think you're pretty big for your britches. You might think there's nothing to it. But my friend, let me say this, that when you die without Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to go to hell. Oh, it's good. you say, listen, the reason they were cast back into hell was that their name was not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That means there was never a time in their life. Are you listening? There was never a time in their life where that they asked Christ to be their Savior. And their name was never written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The word cast here, let me say again, this word cast here means to hurdle. It means that they're just literally thrown. They're thrown into hell. People will literally be taken both soul and body and hurtled into hell. You're going to have a body, and you're going to have a body that's going to withstand all the burning of hell. Hey, you preachers, you stood before your people and you trimmed the corners of hell. Hey, you preachers, that you were afraid uh, to preach on hell, afraid somebody going to run you off. Hey, you preachers, that, that, that you, you had educated folks in your church and you, you wanted them to like you. Hey, you preachers, you had people in the church that had money and had means, and, but you wouldn't warn them there's a hell. My friend, you ought to just quit the ministry. Why don't you just quit? Why don't you just, why don't you either be a man and stand up and preach on hell, or why don't you just quit? Why don't you just find you something else? Go sell cars. Go sell insurance. We need some men of God with the backbone that'll preach the gospel and warn people there's a hell and you don't need to go there. There's boys and girls that need rescuing. There's high school students. There's junior high students. There's grammar grade students. There's people that need to know that you don't have to go to hell. Hey, I need to be saved. That's what we need. Something else. Let me quickly go on. I want to mention you about the duration of hell. You'll find this in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of the name. How does, listen, how does forever sound? How does that sound to your ears right now? How does that sound to your soul, Christian, that your loved one is going to be in the forever zone? Hell is longer than one second. Hell is longer than 10 minutes. Hell is longer than one hour. Hell is longer than 100 years. Uh, hell is longer than 10 million years. Hell is longer than 2 billion years. Think of it. Hell never ceases. There's no rest and there's no help 
and there's no relief for the burning and the agony and, and, and all the pain and all the cursing and all forever and forever you'll suffer. All because of this. Because you refuse to declare Jesus Christ as your Savior. Is that not a sad thing? We come to this point in our lives my friend, can I say this? And, and, and I, I'm closing. I'm closing right now. Death is something that is certain in our lives. I deal with it every year. Someone passes away. And I, 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 I thank God for all the, all the people that passed away, and I know they're in heaven. But it, it bothers me, all the people that die and are going to go in hell. They're never coming back home. They'll never have another day of joy. And we as God's people, we got to wake up. We have to wake up. We got to keep passing out tracks. We got to keep so winning. We got to keep some things red hot about the house of God. And we all have a responsibility from the pulpit to the Sunday schools to the other leadership in our churches and to the pews and to the ushers. Everybody in that church has responsibility. And that's to stand between the living and dying with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and declare to them, you must be born again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for the word of God, the truth of it, how that you, dear God, are going to get glory and honor. I pray for an awakening of God's people, churches, preachers. I pray for those souls, Father, loved ones, Father, that are fixing to die, drop into hell. I pray, holy God, that we'll get a burden and God will do something about it. God, I pray for our nation. I pray for our cities. I pray for our towns. I pray for our communities. Father, there's thousands and thousands of people dying and going to go to hell. Oh, God, may we awake, Father, from our slumber. May we get a burden for them to be saved. And these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen.